Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Creative Nature with BKG. Now with 60% more hair. Today's lesson is on how to set up and maintain a crab trap. So let's go see what we're working with. Okay, let's show you what we're working with today. So on the right is the crab trap or crab pot. You can use those terms uh, interchangeably. And on the left here is the live well. Start with the live well uh, briefly. This is not gonna be in play today. This is once you catch crabs in your crab trap, you would transfer them if you're not uh, immediately steaming them up for a meal, you would uh, let them uh, st store them in this floating live well. So it's got two PVC um, floats on the side and then you would tie it off to your dock or pier. And then there's a hinge on the front that allows you access to drop them inside there and you can feed them if they're gonna be in there for a few days or a week if uh, you're not ready to have your crab feast and they can get uh, fattened up. Okay, so. This is the crab trap or pot. Um, some anatomy parts of the crab pot. So they can be more square. They have some newer ones that are low profile. It's less material, so it's usually less cost. But um, this also has a hinge top that allows access into the trap once they have entered. So the bottom they are funneled in through four entrances on each of the four sides and after they when why they're going in is this center um, cone is where we're going to bait the crab trap so i have some old um, chicken carcass that i'm going to stuff in there for them uh, you can also use uh, fish skin and scraps or um, whatever you have that is in the meat department that you don't find desirable, the crabs definitely will. Okay, um, so I'll show you the baited part there at the end when we drop it in the water. But yes, the crabs enter through these funnels and then are attracted to that bait cone in the middle and then work their way up into this secondary stage and the funneling keeps them, there's a small entrance will that pick up through there in here that they on this second tier so there's a top tier and a bottom tier there um, some regulations required by department of natural resources here in maryland are these two orange coal rings that are in the top that allow smaller um, turtles fish and crabs to exit the trap there's one over on the other side here as well. And then uh, also very important and required by law are the turtle reduction devices or TRDs. They can be plastic orange like these or they can be metal like the ones in here. And that is just a hard metal frame that goes around that entrance that doesn't allow it to uh, allow that um, softer mesh uh, a metal to bend out. So there's a hard frame, whether it's that metal piece that I'm touching there, or made of this orange plastic that could also be there, that doesn't allow a turtle to enter. Because here in the Mid-Atlantic region, we have um, the Diamondback Terrapin, which is local to our, it's the only turtle that lives in brackish waters, like the estuary and rivers around the Chesapeake Bay. So they uh, keep them from entering because uh, Diamondback Terrapin's numbers have been in decline. And part of the reason is due to a lot of them getting trapped and drowning in these cages. Unlike crabs and fish that have gills and breathe underwater, the terp, like humans, have lungs and need air to breathe. So once they're in this uh, crab pot, it is a death sentence. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is turn off the camera for a moment and bait the trap 
and then we'll get it in the water and you can see what it looks like. Stand by. So I did want to make a little bit of a distinction here. Although people use crab trap, crab pot interchangeably, this is technically a crab trap. Smaller that you drop in that is on a kind of pole device that you would have a chicken neck or something uh, or some of this chicken carcass in the middle there and you lay it out on the bottom of the Bayer River and then after a while you come back and pull up the sides. That is technically a crab trap. This is technically a crab pot. Okay. Uh, this is what we're baiting this with today. Um, some chicken carcass left over. It's going to go in the center uh, cone right here. And then another thing on regulations, you are allowed to have two of these crab pots per property. Not per pier, not per person, but two total on the property if you are a recreational crabber, okay? So we're gonna get this baited up and put in the water. Okay, here we are with the baited trap. There's a little bungee goes across here with this metal door that I flip over and then secure down with that bungee and all the bait is now in the bottom and I'm gonna flip it over and drop it in the water here. Final word on a few regulations. The recreational crabbing season runs April 1st through December 15th and the size limits for male hard crabs is five inches from April 1st till July 14th and then from July 15th through December 15th the limit bumps up to five and a quarter inches. So as long as you always have a crab over five and a quarter inches, you are safe and legal. And then soft crabs, the size limit is, they have to be over three and a half inches. All right, so flip this over, tied with a bowline right there, into the water it goes. All right. That concludes another episode of Creative Nature with BKG. We'll see you next time.